Hey church, welcome to our online service. My name is Joel. I'm a part of the team here. And we just wanted to extend a big warm welcome to all of you guys watching online. Hey, why don't you guys take a second to comment down below where you're watching from. And also, why don't you jump on our website and check out, we have locations all across Australia. So hey, you never know, there could be one right down the road from you and you don't even have to watch online. You get your number ones on and head on down there. But hey, we're about to hear an incredible message from Pastor Moni. So why don't you get comfy and stay tuned. Amen. Glow Church, can we put our hands together this morning and today to welcome all of our church and all of our people that are tuning into the room. It's so awesome to have you wherever you are, wherever you find yourself. I pray that as I speak, that you have an open heart and you're ready to hear from heaven. And I love it. Baptism Sunday here on the Gold Coast, but also throughout all of our locations. I love it that we're in a room full of people that are alive. They love Jesus. They love being here. But hey, thank you for joining in with us today. I'm going to get straight into it. If you've got your Bible, if you've got your Word, we love reading the Word as good Christians. From Colossians 2, verse 12 to 13, and it says this, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with them you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for He forgive all of our sins. Now, 13 years ago, I moved from the country of New Zealand all the way here to Australia, the Gold Coast, and I realized really quickly that there is a lot of roads here. There are a lot of highways, byways, little streets, big streets, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of them here in Australia. I recognized really quickly I needed some wheels or some transportation, e.g. I needed a car. All right. The first car I ever brought when I realized that I needed something because I didn't want to catch a bus, didn't want to catch a train. I'm not that guy. And if I did, I'd probably get lost. Anyone here get, get lost sometimes in transport? I know I can see you in the back row. That's cool. But I brought a secondhand 2008 red Hyundai Gets hatchback. The little red Ferrari, as I call it. Actually, my number plate is, oh, should I say my number plate? You might look me up. But anyway, it's got May on my number plate, so I call it Little May. I know. I loved it when, as I brought this second-hand car, and the salesperson on that car yard, honestly, they did did me a good job, right? It's awesome. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, everything's intact. Honestly, a few moments later, you know why it's a second-hand car, right? Suddenly, hear a few noises, hear a few things. I love that the second-hand car, you just do whatever you want to it, because I didn't care, right? And you could probably relate. I didn't care how much it cost as long as it was cheap and it was functioning. I didn't care what color it looked like. I didn't care how big or how small. I just needed it to work. Back in the day when I used to play rugby, I used to take this little bad boy around and it became my mobile bedroom. It became my mobile kitchen. And when I couldn't get to the, you know, wash the clothes, it became my washing basket. A few months later on, still riding this amazing red Hyundai Gets, the second-hand car just did its thing, right? It began to fall down, the, the engine problems, the wipers were going all over the place. In fact, when it rained on my little red Gets, right? It rained, it pours here in the sunny Queensland. It's beautiful, it rains. Honestly, the, the passenger side, the water will start to leak through. And as it leaked through, I start to have wet and wild on the floor. So as I'm breaking, you know, there's waves, there's waves. Everything about a second-hand car, you know, you just have to live with it. I had to live with it. And I got to the point where I said, you know what, it is what it is. However, when you get to that upgrade, now in my season of life, you know, I got married, young kids, I needed to upgrade to something a little bit more fresh and so clean, clean. A little bit more updated. And who knows when you get a new car, there's so many new experiences that you can encounter, right? Uh, man, like, I'm just going to be honest, my wife started the Ten Commandments for this new car. <laughs> thy shall not eat in the car, thy shall not breathe in the car, do not have dirty shoes, do not bring any, don't even pick your bogeys and put it in the car. Don't even eat your fingernails, I know some of you guys do that, and spit it out when no one's looking. And then when you're going to do the old vac, it's all under there. I know, I know. 
I love it that the technology is awesome. The Bluetooth, man, Bluetooth. Far out. And we're still getting fines for using our phone. But Bluetooth, amazing technology. I love the sound system. Who loves a good sound system in their car? Like if you don't, uh, we'll pray for you after this. It's all good. But I love it when the sound system in that fresh new car, turn it up. I just feel my seat go back a bit. Wipe my window down. Yeah. Dun, dun, kshin, dun, 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 kshin. You know what I mean? They're like, I know. You're like, oh, it's not me. No, I know. I've seen you. I've seen you at the red lights. But you know, driving a new car, you will never go back to a second hand car because of the new and freeing experience that you have. See, a life of Jesus is a life of new beginnings and a, lo- and a new life. Jesus makes all things new. Where the old is gone and the new life has begun. I just want to read from that verse again, verse 12. It says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. On Baptism Sunday here and throughout all of our locations, we're going to see people immersed underwater. This is a declaration of these people saying, you know what, I'm getting rid of my old life. I'm dying to self. I want to walk away from that brokenness, that shame, that condemnation. I want to walk away from that life of sin. And this is a true picture. I love that this morning we're celebrating, we're championing those people. And then in that same verse, it says, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Coming out of the water, this is an expression of us coming alive. There's a celebration. There's a, there's a new beginning for you as you come out of this water. This is a picture of Jesus dying on the cross and he rose again. I love that Easter happened and it didn't just stay there. He rose again. This is why we here. This is why we come to church on a Sunday because we know that with Jesus, He has so much control over our lives and the way that we can live in His freedom. My life, um, I know that I, I've prayed the prayer of salvation and also been baptized. So I, I'm not just, uh, you know, we, we're celebrating baptism on Sunday, but also I can just encourage us today that no matter how many times I've said that prayer, no matter how many times I've stand in worship or stand in praise, I know that this journey of faith and living for Jesus is a daily relationship. I never want my life to go back to the life of sin. I want it to be all for Him. And I know that it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ that lives in me. I love Galatians 5 verse 1. It says this, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Stand meaning stand, not sitting. Don't sit, take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. Now can I ask us today, are you living in freedom? Or if I put it this way, are you still walking in the new life that Jesus has given you or have you lost sight of it all? Could it be that you are in a place right now that you have experienced this freedom, but yet you find yourself going backwards all the time? Maybe in your workplace, you wanna shine your light for Jesus. You wanna share your testimony, but yet you're still so ashamed of the very truth that you possess and that you carry. Wherever you stand, and wherever your heart is, I wanna bring some simple thoughts to encourage us today. Wherever you stand, wherever you sit, you may be a mum, you might be a business person, you might be a uni student, you might be going to high school, wherever it is that you stand in that question, I wanna give some encouragement to us if that's okay with us today. So the first thought I have on Baptism Sunday is this, make a decision. You know what, you can drive that second-hand car as much as you want, but you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna die out. So I had to make a decision for the sake of me and my family that I needed a safe and cool and funky and new car because I know the experiences that me and my family will feel, right? So in verse 13, uh, sorry, in Colossians 2 verse 13, uh, the original text, it says, you were dead because of your sins 
Now, at the end of that passage, it says, then God made you alive with Christ, for He forgives all of our sins. Make a decision to have faith and to have a deep belief that Jesus can and will be the Lord of your life. Make a decision to fully surrender it all to Jesus, to fully trust Him with all of your heart, because I believe God's plan for you for the person behind you, for the person in front of you, every person that's watching online, I believe that God's plan for us are so good. My second thought is this, be committed. Be committed to living your new life. As I mentioned before, we don't just celebrate Easter and forget about the new life that we enjoy and that we persist. We need to be persistent and consistent to live a life, to be committed, to know that the promise and the truth that you hold is very special and it's very freeing. Be committed to being obedient. What do you mean, Monty, be obedient? Maybe the presence of God is talking to you about some stuff in your life that you need to tidy up. Maybe you've walked away from some spiritual norms in your family. Maybe you're praying over a meal and you haven't gone back there for a while. And maybe the Lord is speaking to you right now that you need to be obedient in this moment to come back to that. Be committed to not giving up, fighting the good fight and know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Do you guys believe that today? Do you believe it today that He is the same? That He's for us, He's not against us. He's with you in the small, in the big. He doesn't care what mess you're in, He's still with you. He's with us. That's who our Saviour is. I wanna read a scripture, Matthew 28 verse 19. And this is the Great Commission, the words of Jesus. And it says here, therefore, therefore, sorry, like English is my fourth language. <laughs> therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. See today, right here, in a few moments, we are gonna get to see so many lives and so many people taking that bold declaration to say, I love Jesus. I'm so thankful for Jesus. I don't want the old stuff, I want the new stuff. That's what's happening today. It's a holy moment. It's a moment that's gonna set so many people aside or are apart in a way that they're gonna be on mission for what Jesus wants to do through them. And I love it that this is not too late. You may be sitting here and you may have come to church for a long time. Maybe you've just started this year. Maybe you just come through Easter and you just love what you're feeling and what you're seeing. Maybe you've prayed the prayer of salvation, but you're not yet to take that next bold declaration of getting baptized. I wanna invite you today that when there is an invitation, I want you to meet that invitation. Maybe you're feeling this first oh, it's like too many people. Don't worry. You're in good company. You're in, in the midst of so many faith believers that they're championing you on. In fact, we'd probably say we're believing and praying right now that God, as I speak, that whatever, whoever that person is, that you're opening your heart to go, you know what, that could be me. It's not too late. Now, a few years ago, when I was a little bit younger, I did get baptised. My parents, I love them, they, they told me, and they, I was at a, actually at a family camp. Who misses family camps? I, I was part of that, Jen. We went to family camps, I was mad. We actually saw real colours where people were really at when we played like rugby league or something like that. You know, I'm just, you see the real them come out. But I remember I got baptised at a young age. Now, my life went on and I did my thing. I actually, to give you a context, I actually walked away from the Lord. And part of me moving here to Australia was me in a, being in a rebellious mode. I was rebelling against my family, church, couldn't do the Jesus thing anymore, I had enough. People that said that they were gonna be there for me weren't there for me. And I remember I was in a season of life, life where I was so lost. I, I can even recall the moments where I used to go out and I know that in my to intoxicated state, the presence of God was still there with me. The moment that I was like, man, I know I'm not meant to be doing this, but I'm still here. I still felt the presence of God with me at those times. Now, a few years on, we've been part of this amazing church, an amazing journey. We're celebrating 10 years this year. Come on, give it up for God. 
we had a smaller building uh, with a, a little leaner stage with this massive pool and this massive Samoan guy that's holding the mic who's not so massive anymore. But I remember, I remember in that time of my life, I, would, I realigned my heart back to God. I did the salvation prayer and I said, God, I, I need you. And I knew in the moment when that invitation, I wasn't meant to go up, just like what I'm saying. I wasn't meant to go up, but as the word was spoken, something really challenged in my heart that, Mon, you've let so much of the world into your life that you need to put a full stop to this. So yes, I was praying and yes, I was believing and yes, I said yes to Jesus, but there was, it was something was missing. It was that next step to say, you know what? I want to publicly declare that I love Jesus. And I remember that moment when I said, you know what, God? Yes, I will. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna jump in my jeans because I had jeans and a t-shirt. I didn't jump in the other things that we had. I just jumped. I just knew in that moment, in that time, that I needed to realign my life to everything that God has for me. But I also wanted to publicly declare to my friends, to my family, that I'm a Jesus lover and I love God and I love the purpose and plans that He has for me. And it's not too late. Practically here today, we have swimwear, towels, t-shirts, shorts, someone said undies. We've got it all for you because we wanna prepare. We wanna prepare for you that we know that some of us are probably sitting here right now, you're feeling this warmth in your heart that man, you, you need to step up. You're feeling the warmth in your heart. It's like, man, this, this is really for me. Can I say to you, church, friend, wherever you are, please do not be afraid. Please do not let this moment pass you by. If you've been a church goer for a long time and you haven't stepped into getting baptised, please, I invite you. When the invitation comes out, please do not let it just linger. Don't let it just sit, but come forward. Be bold. Because I said again, we're in a room full of people that love Jesus. We're in a room full of, full of people that understands what this significant day means to you and for me. I wanna invite us to be standing right now from back to front, left to right. As much as I'm talking about getting baptised, we know that we never wanna neglect a moment or to never assume that you know Jesus that I'm talking about. You may have come here thinking, man, this is my last effort to get my life right. You may have come here, maybe you've had some family things go down. You may have come here off the back of a bad business thing that just didn't work out or, or that deal just fell through. You're probably coming, you maybe you come from uh, into this room today thinking, man, I've just relocated from a different place, different nation, different state, but yet I've not found friends. Wherever you sit, wherever you are, I wanna make sure that we present this opportunity to you, to present this prayer with you. So many years ago, I prayed the same very prayer. And can I say to you, yes, I did, but it was still imperfect. But the thing is, as much as it's imperfect, I knew that I had Jesus. I knew that I had a Saviour. I knew that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was always with me. So wherever you are, honestly, it would be our honour to pray this prayer with you. Please, can I say to us, do not let this moment pass you by. And if you have been going through stuff throughout your life and you love Jesus and you have been baptised, can I just encourage you, keep living in that new life. Keep holding on to that freedom. Keep holding on to that promise. Do not let go, do not lose sight of what God is doing through your life, through your family, through your work colleagues, wherever you are. This is a moment for all of us to say, you know what, we love you God, thank you. So I invite you to close your eyes, left to right, back to front, front to back. Sounded like I was doing a rap. But this is the moment I wanna pray this prayer. And all of the church and every person in this room is gonna declare these words. Our worship team is gonna say this. Can I say to you, we are so glad, we are so proud, we are so honoured that you could stand here today and taking that courageous and bold step to say, you know what? Yes, Jesus, I need you right now. 
we're going to pray this prayer and I want every believer to believe with me that multiple lives will be saved. Multiple lives will say yes to Jesus. Is that cool? Can we pray? Let's pray out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I invite you, I invite you into, my life. into my life. Would you forgive me, Would you forgive me of, all of, my sin? of all my sins? Would you take my past, you take my past and, exchange it and exchange it for your amazing future? Your amazing future. I, believe I believe that you died, that you died and that you rose again. And, you rose again. and, now, I'm declaring and now I'm declaring from this day forward, this day forward I, will follow you. I will follow you. In the mighty name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we all say, come on, let's lift our voices today. Hey, congratulations. If you're one of those people that prayed that prayer that Pastor Moni led us through, we just want to extend out the warmest congratulations to you guys. That's such an incredible decision. And we just wanted to help partner with you uh, to make that journey of this, this new journey for you as easy as possible. So you can jump on our website at glowchurch.com and you'll see a new Christians tab in the top right corner that you can click on that guides you through three easy steps. The first is a few small videos. Hey, if you, I don't know if you've ever built an Ikea set before, but it is impossible without the instructions, right? It's a lot harder, but we just set up a few little instructions, a few little bit of a manual to help you guys figure out the next steps of your journey. It'll take you only 20 minutes in total to get through that. There's also an online option to download a free Bible, free digital Bible for you guys and you'll hear that preached from every Sunday. So why don't you take the opportunity to do that? And lastly, every week at 8 p.m. we have a Zoom that runs and I don't. I think there's a great way to jump on there. You can learn about the foundations of the Christian faith from some of our pastors. You don't have to have your screen on. You can leave it blank. You can be sitting there eating Maltesers, doing whatever you want to do. But that's amazing. We're so thankful that uh, we got to lead you through that moment there. But I'm just going to pray for all of your weeks. So why don't you join with me? Lord, thank you for each and every person, Father God, that's going to hear your word tonight, Lord. I thank you that uh, you're softening people's hearts, Lord. And we thank you for each and every one of those people that took the opportunity to make that decision, Father God. Lord, we just pray your blessing, Father God, and your hand of favour over each and every person, Father God. Lord, we lift you up, we honour you, and we thank you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. We'll see you next time, church.